right, so welcome back to another episode of the Palm Beach North podcast brought to you by the Palm Beach North Chamber of Commerce. My name is Noel Martinez, and today we have a very special guest, the president and CEO of the Business Development Board, Miss Kelly Smallridge. Kelly, welcome to Thank the show. You. Thank you for having me. It's a so, pleasure. Kelly, so you, as you know, are one of my favorite people, right? <laughs> I think, yes, not only it's are you- mutual. Oh my God. So it's mutual. Kelly has one of the biggest personalities ever. Like you guys see her on stage, you see her on TV and yes, she's absolutely an amazing woman. But outside of all that, she's even better. She's got a heart the size of a Volkswagen buggy and is just- loves her people and is super, super loyal. And that is what I love about this woman. So that's why I'm so excited to have you here today. But I want people to get to know that side of you. So let's talk about you, if that's okay. Can we start with that? We'll try. All right, we'll try. All right, all right. So talk to us about Kelly and what was it like growing up as Kelly Sparge? So I was, most people don't know, born and raised here in Palm Beach County. I'm actually a product of the Palm Beach County public school system. Palm Beach Gardens High School, right? John I. Leonard High oh, John School, I. Leonard. where a Sorry. lot okay. of us graduated All right. right. from. All right. And uh, graduated and uh, gra graduated as valedictorian of my high school, um, served as a class president, uh, 10th and 11th grade. Oh, I could have won. Of course you did. <laughs> and um, went off to the University of Florida. But my, my really cool story is I grew up in the little village of Palm Springs. And my mom was a owner of a private preschool. And my father was an engineer at Pratt Whitney, which is what brought my parents here. And I came from the most beautiful home that you could ever envision. You know, you you don't see it as much today. The world's a lot different and the family structure is a lot different today. But grew up in this beautiful home with my mom and my dad always working together to give the three children the best opportunity. And I always joke that, you know, it wasn't okay to be a part of student leadership, like it would be okay for most parents. They would be pleased if their child was a student leader. I had to be president of the class and I couldn't be 10th in my class. I had to be first in my class and I couldn't be a cheerleader. I had to be the captain of the cheerleading squad. And so I credit my parents for really pushing me in that direction. Um, but I remember days going to John A. Leonard High School where my father was a, a um, counselor or a judge for the science fair. And my mom was a cheerleading mom. And so I had just this really great upbringing with just really good core values and then went off to the University of Florida. And that's where just all went crazy. Well, how did it go <laughs> crazy? Because I'm a gator. Because you're a gator. So. Well, then I went off to college and um, I had a wonderful time. And I was a member of Delta Gamma, very, you know, equally involved in college as I was high school, but certainly living away from home was an absolute blast. And uh, honored to be still connected to my alma mater, uh, University of Florida and still a big part of Gators, but going away to a big campus like that was was a, more than a lot of fun. Right. I didn't miss out on anything, put it that way. Well, we'll talk about your story, how you ended up coming back home, but tell me about your boys. You have three boys. So yeah, so I um, wanted three, four girls. I wanted four daughters and I um, ended up having three boys, which was the greatest blessing. I believe that God gives you what you can handle. And in hindsight, I don't think I would have been a good girl mom. Well, I'm going to tell you right now, <laughs> I have one of each, right? I have a boy and a girl and the boy is way easier, even it's, as an adult. So, right. so, to so that like, don't point, get mad at me right now when you see this, but. Well, exactly to your point, God gives you what you can handle. And so here I have this, you know, booming career that is more than a 15 hour day. And so no wonder why God gave me three beautiful boys and they've been wonderful. And I, I, I think that they have added so much to my career. I think kids and I raised them as for the most part as a single mother, they lost their father in their teens. And um, that is probably one of the most difficult stories of my entire life, having to, you know, tell your children that they lost their father. But but my experience with raising three boys alone is the most humbling experience. Um, you know, you can imagine jumping out of, you do this all the time. You give a speech, you jump off the stage, I'm running in my heels on a football field trying to deliver, you know, tackle gear, Gatorade, and whatever else, their helmet. And then I'm running home because I forgot something. And then the next morning, I'm loading up three kids, two kids on my hips, and going taking them to preschool. And so you had to do all of that. And in many ways, um, work became sort of my release and, and the BDB was almost like a vacation compared to the chaos oh of working with three boys. So, but anyways, uh, they are all grown adults now, uh, Two of them went to University of Florida. One tried to get into the University of Florida and is at Santa Fe, but they are out 
Um, one is getting an education and two are on their own with their own jobs. So. Are we going to get it back here? I mean, where, where are they at? Now? We'll discuss that a little later. But as you know, the cost of housing in Palm Beach County is very, very expensive. And if you're 21, younger than 30, and you're making an average salary, it's pretty hard to afford a home here in Palm Beach County. And so they chose to purchase a home in a different part of the state of Florida. So fortunately, it's not too far. They're not in another state. So I get to see them quite frequently. So we'll talk about that here in a little bit. So I love the story, how you ended up applying for the business development board job. You said this, uh, you told us a story at one of our events at the chamber, uh, caught a couple months ago yeah. or so. So Tell us about that story because it's awesome. <clears throat> so I, you remember I said I was born and raised here and um, I was at the University of Florida and applied. I would apply through, my mom made me. She said, you've got to apply for X number of jobs before you come home. So April before my May graduation at UF, I was searching through the Palm Beach Post and I came across this ad. Now, mind you, my only job prior to this was side jobs, you know, either hostessing or working at a preschool, just minor stuff, no real strong business experience, not like what they have today. So I came home one weekend because I was a diehard, avid SunFest participant. And I grew up in the SunFest days where there was no fence and no charge to get into SunFest. And I would literally take off of school and I would come down and I would be there from the day the gates open until it closed. I was not missing it. I could so, see that. <laughs> yeah, I, I was not missing one band. I was not missing one piece and I would stay there the entire time. So SunFest was taking place my senior year at the University of Florida. And I came in with all, you know, went shopping, got all my cute outfits and everything to go. And the phone rings. And there was a person on the other line that said, uh, good afternoon, you applied for a job at, at the time, Palm Beach County uh, Development Board, and we would like for you to come in for an interview. And so it was this Saturday. is like through facts, right? Because you, ever, if I remember correctly, it was a classified ad it in was the prior newspaper. To fact. It was a classified ad of which I wrote a letter and attached a hard copy and mailed it from Gainesville. Like there was a, it was an envelope with an actual stamp on it. I don't think faxes were even around then. <laughs> Our kids don't understand. They don't have any clue. <laughs> Um, so I sent it off and the phone rang and they said, come in for an interview. And my mother heard the conversation on the other end. And I said, I'm sorry, um, I've got a conflict. I'm not available for the interview. My mother said, no, you are going to that interview. She's like, tell him yes, tell him yes. Well, I didn't want to interrupt my SunFest activities that Saturday, but the interview was then. Uh, and so she took me to Birdines at the time, which is the old, which is, which is Macy's now, but Birdines was old, over at the Palm Beach Mall which it no longer exists. Mm -hmm. And I got my first gray suit with the lapels that came to a point at the end. And I want, I put my hair in a bun because I didn't even want to know that I had long hair because people thought, well, that's not, that's distracting. And I applied for the job. And um, I, like I said, when I interviewed finally, after I made it, it was a pool of 240 candidates. I walked into a pool or a room of all men, and they were looking at me like, you must be kidding. What in the world does this young 20-year-old know about doing business? And then you know the rest of the story. Yeah, he went. I, it, I got it. it I, and I ended up in funding. And many of the people that served in Palm Beach North leadership, like Mike Mitrione and Lou Gata, mm -hmm. were on that original group. And they said, what experience do you have in fundraising? And I said, I've been asking for funds from my dad my entire life. And that's about my experience. So that's it. Oh my God. My daughter's pretty good at that too. <laughs> so what, um, so personally, right. Let's not talk VDV yet. So personally, what are you looking forward to more most in the next, what, 12 months or so? 12 to maybe personally, maybe, maybe year to three years. So as I mentioned for the first time in my life, uh, I, you know, I'm an empty nester now, and that's a big transition when your whole life is your job and your children, because there's not much time, you start to re-envision, who are you? Like, how are you going to spend the next 20 years of your life? And so I had it in me to really bring my family together on a regular basis. I really am outside of BDB. I really am about family. And that includes, you know, distant relatives, my in-laws, my outlaws, my parents, everybody to the table. So I bring the family together once a week. And bringing those connections together and entertaining on a regular basis with friends and family is like my new thing. My second new thing of w where I'm going in. Well, who's doing all the cooking? I am. You are. I'm doing all the cooking. You're a good cook. I, I, I started that. That's my other thing. I, I started cooking. So I was the joke of the family when I was raising my kids. They called me the crock pot mom. And there'd be this crock pot and this calendar of where everyone was going. And they would laugh that I'd have like a pot roast or spaghetti. Nothing really 
you know, unique. And so I thought, okay, I'll, I'll show them. And so now I've really started to get into cooking. Good. And I moved into a different home that gives me a bigger kitchen so I can do that. And the third thing that I'm doing is I'm really trying to get out there and travel a lot more. I think I need that decompression just to disconnect and get out. And so I've tried to get away every other weekend, even if it's just a night. And I just came back from my first one week. I haven't even done a two-week vacation yet, but a one-week vacation in Cabo, San Lucas. So I, I'm doing those three things, entertaining, cooking. Um, I, you know, I've never really had the chance to have girlfriends over to the house uh, for wine and cheese and then traveling with family and friends. And I think that's really big. And I'm trying to create traditions for my children, praying that I'll get grandchildren and those traditions will be in place and they'll pass it on to next generations. Anywhere specific that's on your bucket list that you want to go? Um, I really want to go back to Italy. I want to go back to France, um, Paris, and I've never been to Greece. Uh, so what part of Italy? Because I, the best vacation I've ever taken. Posit Positano. Exactly. Oh, Positano. Oh my God, Kelly. I have to go there. I'll never forget. Yes. Like the sunsets. Yes. The most beautiful sunset you've ever seen in your life. Agree. Such a romantic, just beautiful food, the people. Oh my God. It's absolutely yeah. amazing. So have you been to the Amalfi Coast at all? No. Or no? So oh my that's God. top gotta, of list. Gotta, uh, Rex. Please yes. take notes, Rex, because this is something that you have guys to have it. to do it. Yeah. It's amazing. And and I would say that you can, in, at the BDB, my 30, now 35-year career, it, it was very hard for me to do those types of things. Mm -hmm. The last thing I want to do is let down this county, right? You have to be on call 24-7, and we'll get into that sort of dynamic there. But when you are charged with bringing jobs to the county and you are competing on behalf of this county, you don't want to be the one that misses out or that loses out. Yep. And so I've not had that opportunity before. And I think not having my children at home has given me a little bit more freedom to go in these directions. And, and last, I would say health. I think um, without a doubt, you know, I've run myself ragged and I, I really need to focus on good health for the next 20 years. All right. So we dabbled into the business development board. So let's get into it. And then we could always go back and, and, and talk a little bit, a little bit more about Kelly, because I want to talk tons about Kelly. So talk to me about the business development board. What exactly, I mean, I know what they, I know what you guys do, but what does the business development board do and how does it impact economic development? in our county? Good question. So let's go back to 40 something years ago, the business community, the private sector in Palm Beach County said, when there is a business that looking to grow in Palm Beach County in our backyard, or if there's one looking to expand here, we only want one organization that serves on the line of competition to beat out all of the other locations and win that for Palm Beach County because we want a unified voice. So your chamber and seven other chambers got together along with the Economic Council and spun this organization out to serve on the front lines to do these things, recruit new companies from out of state, retain those in our backyard, and expand those in our backyard. The bottom line is to create good quality jobs with the idea that the county was really built on tourism, real estate, and agriculture. And so they created us to diversify and complement those industries. They charged us to go after knowledge and technology jobs, which include aerospace, fintech, corporate headquarters, life science, manufacturing, distribution, and logistics. And that's what we're here to do. We don't have a PAC we're not a lobbying organization. We do have a private membership base, but we are sisters to the chambers of commerce and not competitors. Yeah, absolutely. People ask me all the time, like, you know, how, what are chambers of commerce like? What's the relationship with the business Excellent. development board? I'm like, well, we work Excellent. great together. We can't Ke do it without you. No, and Kelly's job is to get everybody here. Our job is to take keep them here. Take it from here. there. <laughs> yeah, and take it from there. Yeah. Like, we're on to the next company. And that's why it's such a, a complimentary beneficial relationship is I'm really doing the handoff after they're here to make sure for you to make sure that they feel very welcome here. So recruit, retain, expand, create jobs and diversify. So our county is exploding. Like we're busting at the seams. Like I feel like there's companies moving down here every single day. We've been tagged as, you know, Wall Street South. Um, we're a big deal now. You know, everybody's talking about Palm Beach County and everything that we have going on. Why have we grown so much? What is it? What is it that it's, what, what is it about Palm Beach County that it's so attractive? So a lot of people will say, oh, it's beautiful here in the beaches. We have had beautiful sand and beaches and lifestyle since the existence of Florida. So that is not the reason. The reason why it's exploding now are a couple of things. Let's go back to COVID, right? First of all, technology allows you to do business anywhere. 
If you could do business anywhere, why not do it in the most beautiful place in the United States? Second, we have a wide array of real estate opportunities to meet your business needs. Whether you're looking for class A office space, B or C space, we have it here. Third, the balance that's created. So a lot of New Yorkers, so New York, Chicago, Boston, Greenwich, are, and California are our target markets. You know, in New York, they're telling us we spend two to three hours just commuting to and from work, but they come here, they spend in a, an hour in the ocean swimming before they even go to the office, and they're in the office by 7.30 and never got on the subway, never shoveled snow. Since COVID, 11,000 people moved to Palm Beach County in the year right after, and 41% came from New York. So you look at that explosive growth that has resulted from available real estate, great public and private schools, affordable cost of doing business here, no state tax on personal income, affordable if you're coming from New York, Boston, or Greenwich, may not be affordable to you and I because we've spent so much time here, but very affordable to others outside of the state, and a governor who is a proactive business governor. So when COVID hit, businesses were shut down nationwide. Our governor, whether you like him or not, said Florida is open. Our governor also said schools are open. So, you know, you line up those five things and we have seen the most explosive growth in the 40 years of economic development in this county. And it's bringing big challenges to this county as well. So let's talk about that, right? So I, I think I know what the biggest challenges are. You know, when we, we do a pretty good job of polling our chamber members consistently throughout the year, we pull them right before we put our, le our legislative agenda together. The number one issue for our businesses, and at least in the Palm Beach North region, and I'm pretty sure it's across the country right now, especially here in Florida and Palm Beach County, is housing that's affordable. Exactly. Right. So what are you hearing? You know, what are what what are the, the biggest issues that come with all that growth? OK, so housing is definitely number one. And let's talk a little bit about that. You know, there has to be some land use changes in this county in order to make it affordable for a developer to uh, entice them to build. If you can only build four or eight stories in this county and land is two million dollars an acre. If you have the option of building luxury condos or building apartments, you're going to build luxury condos, okay? So we have to look at our land use. We also have to be okay with a corridor such as Military Trail, Dixie Highway, Congress Avenue, just to name a few, where you see old shopping centers that were built in the 1950s that are single-story, run-down, huge parking lots that certainly could go vertical. But what happens, Noel, when they go, when they propose to go vertical? You get all of these residents coming out in fierce opposition to say, not in my backyard. I don't want 10 stories of an apartment complex in my backyard. And you don't see anyone in favor of it. So you get the not in my backyard syndrome whenever that's going up. So add density and intensity. You have to coalesce a business community at these public meetings to counter the opposition that you're going to receive. And we have to get more aggressive about providing those bonuses and incentives for that infill de development. I'm not necessarily a fan of pushing out west on green fields. Uh, to go vertical when all of the, the job centers are really east. And we don't need to put more cars on the road coming from Royal Palm, Loxahatchee, the acreage, and out west here. So let's really take a look at smart development along corridors that already have eight lanes of roads. You, you touched on incentives. So what incentives are out there for businesses or big CEOs that want to move their companies to somewhere in South Florida? Like what incentives do we have to offer that other regions do not? So I get that asked all the time, and you're not going to believe the answer. The incentive is not financial. The incentive is the way in which we court the deal, make them feel welcome in Palm Beach County, and the biggest incentive is speed to market. So if you offer someone a couple million dollars and an incentive to come here versus an expedited permit and to get them in the door in eight months instead of three years, which is what other counties do, you will win the deal most of the time on expedited permitting. Yeah, because those three years are going to cost them exactly. way more than a million and a half, you if, know, a million dollars. If you're streamlining the process, mm -hmm. they will take the streamlined process, which is very difficult, much easier said than done. So we've had to work on that. So financial incentives are there as well. Some cities offer a dollar amount per job created. 
the general rule of thumb is about $3,000 per job created. Gardens, uh, West Palm Beach, Boca Raton have incentive programs. Uh, and the, city, uh, the county has an ad valorem tax exemption, which provides you of a county portion on your property tax up to 10 years and up to 100%. The state also has an incentive. But I always caution private companies. It is a process. And the difference in economic development today is the window of which you have to work with them is not three years like it was decades ago. It's get me in my building in six months. And the incentive process sometimes takes longer than that period and they're not willing to wait. The second incentive, can you get my kid in private school? If I could get paid for every kid that I've put in private school, I could double the budget of the BDB. That's not at the expense I get those of public. Too, by the way. Exactly. And it's very difficult. There's not a private school that really has an opening today. Mm -hmm. That is not at the expense of public schools because, as you and I know, we're doing a lot of work with public schools. And I'm going to tell you right now, I say this all the time. I, we have public schools in North County that are putting more kids in four year schools than, right. than private schools that you're paying 30, 40, 50, 60,000 dollars a year for. You're absolutely right. Yeah. And I said this earlier today <clears throat> if you give me the opportunity, to show you a public school, I will not lose you. I've not lost a CEO yet that says I'm not coming to Palm Beach County because of your public schools. The problem is they don't give you the opportunity to do the red carpet tour of the public schools with Superintendent Mike Burke. Now, I remember the days when Chamber, uh, Florida Chamber President Mark Wilson held up a Wall Street Journal article that said something about Florida. And the way they spelled Florida was D-U-H at the end instead of DA, meaning that Florida was not an intelligent market for your children or for your employees. I would say that that has changed dramatically over the last 20 years. And there are a lot of Wall Streeters coming into our area that are shocked as to the quality of our public and private schools right now. And many of them move their children from prominent private schools in the Northeast and have said that their children's school is of a lesser caliber of what they found here in Palm Beach County. So Wall Street, Wall Streeters, how have we become Wall Street South, right? That's like, a good story. That, that, that's, um, everybody's talking about that. We've exactly. become Wall Street South. So how did we do that? So people think that we just woke up after COVID and it just became Wall Street South. Uh, fast forward today, we actually are in the process of trademarking Wall Street South. We have registered the name. But let me take you back 15 years ago. As you mentioned, I'm the mother of three boys. And the Business Development Board, back in the day, their way of doing targeted economic development was to put me on a plane and send me all over the country selling Palm Beach County out of a briefcase to companies in New York, Boston, and Greenwich. I realized after working with about 30 companies a year when I identified a trend that most of the executives had an affiliation with Palm Beach County and even had a second home in Palm Beach County, but really never gave any thought to doing business here. They thought this is where you come to go to the beach, have fun, fish, and that was it. Vacation with their family. This is where their grandparents lived. So I took one summer when my boys were away at camp and I analyzed 2,000, actually 42 miles of beaches, not all 2,000 square miles. I went 42 miles of coastline. I honed in on everybody in five wealth markets, Boca Raton, Manalapan Del Rey, Island of Palm Beach, Island of Jupiter, and Wellington. And I came across 173 CEOs. It was like a stocking strategy. Fast forward to today, I try to get 10,000 steps in a day. So I would, that stalking strategy would lead me to attend black tie events, get to know the people, rub elbows with them, try and figure out what company they were affiliated with. And it was this long drawn out process of accumulating those 170 plus names. Fast forward to today, when I walk it in the evening, I go over the bridge, I scan everybody's mailbox in Palm Beach with my iPhone. And I take the address, bring it home at night, Google it, and I collect a whole new group of newcomers to the island, and I go after them if they don't have a business presence in Palm Beach County. Now, we became Wall Street South because that was what was called behind the gates. Remember, it started as going behind the gates and into the homes of executives who moved here and didn't know a thing about doing business here. We then landed on Wall Street in the Wall Street Journal, I found myself on Fox News three times, um, CNBC talking about this, and it became Wall Street South soon after COVID. And now it's 
internationally recognized. We've won awards for the economic development strategy. And the board asked me to go and trademark Wall Street South the other day, which gives us the rights to use it exclusively and also to use it on merchandise and apparel. That's awesome. Yeah. That's happening right here yes. in our backyard yes. in Palm Beach County, which is amazing. So walk me through this stalking process, right? <laughs> so how do you, so you know, the CEO is now, now, you know, CEO of John Smith company, big company with thousands of employees. Mm -hmm. Walk me through that process. What's that courting process look like? So you have to go during season. Um, you, you discover a lot of these people at certain places in Palm Beach. So I have these secret places that I go to where, you know, you hear a conversation very easily at like a Henry's or the breakers or a club or a black tie. You have that conversation to open the door or you go into their network either through a lead from a private school headmaster or a neighbor that is affiliated with our organization. Um, if you get the door open, you're 50% through the sales process. And, you know, they have a home here. So they know to some degree what this area is like. You bring them into the office and you roll out the red carpet. And what I mean by that is most economic development boards will have the president stand up, give you this very dry presentation and sell you on their county and away they go. When you come into the business development board, you're going to be greeted by a mayor, mayor of the county, mayor of the city. You'll be greeted by a university president. You'll be greeted by a superintendent of schools, a private school headmaster, and probably five other people who are the head of a factor that's going to make a decision. Um, a difference in your decision to move here. So if you tell me that you want to put your kid in a certain private school, chances are you're going to walk in the room in that presentation and that headmaster is going to be sitting there ready to talk to you about your children. If you're concerned about your mid-level managers and the public schools that they're sending their children to, they'll be there. From there, we take them uh, to breakfast, to lunch, to dinner. We may take them on an excursion um, a recreational activity, a concert, anything that's going to really show them the flavor and fabric of Palm Beach County. Because Palm Beach County looks very different than St. Lucie County. Oh, yeah. And, and Palm Beach County looks very different than Austin. There's nothing really as beautiful as Palm Beach County. So you have to sell them on the fact that your employees will be happier here and your company will be more successful if you're able to recruit easier in a location like this rather than Kansas city. So Kelly, who, who is our biggest competition out there? Like who are we losing to? Are so there, I mean, there um, can't be many. I mean, no one has Kelly's there's not so. many, but they, but we lose a lot of times on cost, right? So if you're in manufacturing distribution logistics or even an office, I mean, you know, you, you, we're now the highest priced office per square foot than anybody in the state of Florida. So sometimes we lose because of cost. Mm -hmm. We're also very far down in the peninsula of Florida. So if you're looking to ship a product out and you have to go all the way outside of Florida, it's probably not the best location. But if you're looking to distribute to Latin and Caribbean markets, it makes sense. So we may lose to Austin. They say it's a younger, more vibrant, educated workforce, hip, and a lot of things to do. But I would remind them that when I was growing up here in Palm Beach County, the average age was 72. And today it's closer to 39 and a half in some cities. So Austin, Nashville, Denver, Atlanta are our biggest competitors. Wow. They really look at areas that are attractive to the workforce because remember education and workforce is the currency of economic development. Nobody moves to an area where you can't attract a workforce. And you want the, the young blood that's interested in bringing great new ideas, fresh ideas. So you have to constantly work on not only recruitment, retention, expansion, but how do I work with you to make this a more vibrant and young area for the next generation of leaders? That's great. How do we do that, Kelly? Like, what's the best way to do that? How do we develop our future workforce? You have to look at the overall um, geographic um, um, amenities offered within the 10 cities that you serve. Mm -hmm. Okay. Look at the balance. Look at the balance of access to the water and the ocean. And do you really have access to a wide array of boating, scuba diving, um, kiteboarding? Believe it or not, I had a prospect come in and say, just take me to kiteboarding. And I found myself in Jupiter. I know where to take them. Exactly. By the way. <laughs> so all of those things that, you know, uh, North County is so flush with, mm -hmm. you've got to make sure you have that balance nightlife, 
educational offerings. Sit down, take a look at your footprint and say, do we really have all A-rated schools within the 10 cities? And I look at areas of this county that are very, very successful. And when I take a prospect to them, the first thing they'll say is, we can brag that we have all A-rated schools in our area. And I encourage regions in our county to be attractive to young families by starting with the quality of your education. If you want to help economic development, work on all A-rated schools. So you talked about A-rated schools, and, and I think, you know, what a great long time ago, one of the first chamber presentations I've ever seen you do, and this was years ago before I was a CEO of the chamber, was someone asked you at our chamber event, um, Kelly, what can the business community do or what can we do as a chamber to help you get businesses to come down? And the thing that you said was, you need, we need all A schools. I we want all space. A schools. If we have A, if we have all A schools, we have an advantage over yes. any region. Absolutely. And recently I had a company interested in North County and I sat down with my colleague and looked at elementary, middle and high. And I have to say, it wasn't where I think it needs to be. And the other piece that's very important is if you look at the transition from elementary to middle and high and the path that your child would take based upon where you live, it you may have an A elementary and then a C middle and then a B high. And you have to take a look at that. So again, back to the quality of education will drive young families coming into the area. And all of those young families with good jobs will generate more revenue for the area, making it more diverse in a number of different ways, bringing tax dollars to your region here in Palm Beach North. That's great. Great. So let, let's go back to these CEOs. So we, we talked a little bit about the process. You know, what are they asking you for? Right? Like, what do they say? Kelly, I need Yes. yes. We talked about schools, right? right. Probably hey, schools is important. Education is important. What else are they asking you for? So um, they'll come in like yesterday and they'll they'll come and say, do you have any freestanding 60,000 square foot industrial buildings with three dock doors near the airport, near the port? And I want bus transportation coming right up to my door. I would like to partner with a college who's going to do all the training for free or workforce career source to provide the workforce. Um, I want to know the price of sending cargo out of your airport. I want to know how frequent you have direct flights to the markets that I serve. Uh, I want to know how to get my kids into public school. What tax abatements do you have? What free dollars do you have? Uh, how can I be within a foreign trade zone? And the list really goes on. And we uh, give me the demographic data. What, do, what salary do I need to provide? Is this a clean site? Is it not a clean site? If it's a brownfield, how do I get money to clean up the oil on the site? And the Business Development Board comes in as a one-stop shop. And I say that very loosely, but other economic development boards, not all, but a lot in the state of Florida, would take that and say, let me send you down the road. Here are 15 agencies that you need to deal with. And that CEO may think that that's the greatest resource. At the Business Development Board, we don't do it that way. We bring them into our office. First meeting is analyzing the needs. And the second meeting is bringing all of those 15 questions that they asked us and having a point person around the table. If you look at, in your region, the Niagara Water Bottling Plant, mm -hmm. 200,000 square feet is the probably the most complicated economic development project I've ever worked due to the amount of water, one of the biggest water users in our county. We won that by the approach that I just mentioned. We had water utilities. We had ERM. We had Durham. We had the fire department. We had the county permitting. We had the school district, Workforce Alliance. We had everybody sitting at the table, and that's how you win the deal. One-stop shop. You will beat out other counties in this process, but they ask you a lot of questions. Now, this process is not a three-month process. This can be a three-year process from the time you open the project to the time you close it, depending on whether or not it's a built to suit. So that doesn't happen on your own. And you've been talking about all these organizations that you work with to make these things happen. You've popped in some names here and there throughout the whole interview. So collaboration is important. Oh, There's no gosh. way we could do this on our own, right? So what other organizations do you collaborate or what other partners do you have and how do you partner with them? So back to my earlier point, Chambers of Commerce are great collaborators because you know your region better than us. Mm -hmm. And as we come in, I often ask you questions. Where do I go? Who can I connect with? For these more detailed when it comes to the region. But on a county perspective, collaboration is the key. And I think that's our secret sauce in, in this area. Colleges and universities, county elected officials, city elected officials, a public school district, 
um, Economic Council, Housing Leadership Council. There really isn't anyone in this county that we don't partner with. And at the very top of the list, Florida Power and Light. Because if you can't get utilities to the site, you don't have a site. So you know the situation with transformers. And as the BDB brings in more manufacturing, distribution, and logistics, they are critical to that process. So there isn't anyone that we don't collaborate. We're very inclusive. Our goal is to put forward the greatest A-team that will wow the company that is going to walk out our door and onto Austin and Atlanta and Nashville and, you know, Charlotte. It's awesome. It's, so, it's not a, um, we're not, I never get anyone that comes in and says, you've won it already. Palm Beach County is all I'm looking at. I mean, that would be a walk in the park and it's not that, that way. Happen. No, it doesn't happen. So goals, what are, we, we talk goals. So what are some key goals or some key initiatives that the business development board is going to be, is working on or going to be working on in the next five, 10, 15, 20 years? So take the last 35 to 40 years of the business development board goals. Goals were to bring in a lot of companies, um, big floor prints, a uh, lot of capital investment, check box, check box, check the box. The next 10 to 15 years is a focus on really the best and smartest, brightest, most innovative companies and in making this the hub of where they are headquartered. So not quantity, but quality. Because we checked a lot of boxes for economic diversification, we now want to be the epicenter of where the smartest people and smartest companies move their business. And I'm challenged by that and don't think that's a slam dunk. And I'll give you a reason why I don't think it's a slam dunk. I thought I had a very futuristic video of what Palm Beach County would look like that I was going to wow a prospect with. He came from Dubai. And when I showed it to him, and it had light rail coming down Okeechobee Boulevard. He said, you call that futuristic? You know, where are your driverless cars and your automated traffic lights that sense people walking down the street and all of your smart technologies? And that's really where we want to go. Not just bringing it here, but having them headquartered here. So a little shift in terms of agreeing on numbers Numbers are important, but focusing on quality and talking to our county commission, which we're great partners with about that shift, it, um, because I think that housing, education and transportation are the three other areas that the BDB is going to focus on as we go to more of a quality and smart, innovative hub. So let's change it up a little bit, right? So you're, you've been with the business development board now almost 30 years, 35, 35, I'm sorry, 35 years. All right. So over 30 years. So your name is synonymous with the business development board. Well, Kelly can't be running the organization forever. So, um, you know, I, it's really tough to imagine the organization without Kelly Smarters, to be honest with you. But, you know, what are you doing today to prepare for that day? Yeah. So someone um, once told me, you know, when you leave the organization, your leadership is going to be tested in terms of the quality of what you leave behind. And the best thing you can ever do is build a good bench strength. And it's it's an uneasy conversation because I'm not there yet, right? I've had the good fortune of people who have been with the organization for 35 years, the full 35 years I've been there. My mid-level management has been there 15 plus years. And obviously that bench is going to term out in short order. So what am I doing today? I'm working on attracting a group of young, innovative leaders that are going to create the next business development board. And there is no doubt in my mind that somebody else will come along that's brighter with more innovative ideas. Um, and so I'm cultivating that bench right now. It will most likely take a good three to five years to develop, but I've brought four new employees on and I'm training them to in the same manner I was trained. I've held eight positions at the Business Development Board. You have to be a jack of all trades. And so I'm grooming this new bent strength to be really diverse in their skill sets. But I'm convinced today, if I were to get run over by a truck tomorrow, there's no way the current staff would let our board down. They could carry us. Who the next leader will be, hopefully it comes from within the organization. And I'm growing that right now. That's awesome. That's yeah. a great answer. And, and that's what I expected you to say, to be honest with you. So- um, so if you could go back, last question, right? Cause this has been awesome. And you and I could sit here 
all day and talk. Uh, we could talk about our staff all day long. We could talk about building the bench, which you and I talk a lot about. But if you could go back and give your younger self some advice, knowing what you know now, yeah, what would you tell that young Kelly that was on her way to Sunfest and didn't want to go to that BDB right. interview? Oh, gosh, I'd have a hard talk with Kelly. And I'm going to say some things that may surprise a lot of people because I think people only see me in that business on the stage, given the pitch about Palm Beach County, I would have a hard talk with Kelly about the, the work-life balance. Um, you know, you can't, you can't be everything. And a lot of people say, do you think you missed out on some things? And I would say, yeah, how, how are you 100% CEO and 100% mom? And I don't, I would not profess that I created the best balance. But so, you did it. I did it. I mean, you were a single it. mom of three boys. I, I did it. I did it. But gosh, was it ever hard. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I remember, and I'll, I'm so transparent. I, re I remember a time um, in 2020 when COVID hit and I was getting ready to hit the stage to present to somebody moving in. And I got a phone call from my youngest son and he said, mom, where are you? And I said, uh, actually, it was in May. I said, I'm getting ready to hit the stage. What, should, what do you need? And he goes, well, they told me at Wellington High School that I'm getting my diploma and I've got to drive through the line. Can you come in and meet me to get my graduation picture in the parking line? And I'm like, buddy, I'm sorry. I've, I've got to I got to do this speech. And, you know, I missed the opportunity because I was so far away from Wellington. And, you know, I think about things like that. I didn't miss a lot. I'm not going to beat myself up, mm -hmm. but I, I, I miss some things. You know, you have to Think about, you know, two nights out a week, leaving the house at 7 a.m., you know, missing a PTA meeting. It happens. So I would tell my younger self, create a balance. Second, do not stop being educated. You know, while you're climbing a ladder, go get certificates, go get licenses, you know, really upskill your credentials so that you can move in different directions at all times, whether you stay with your company or you move on. The key is that, you know, a lot about a lot of things because no matter where you go in your work environment, you're going to be sitting down with people that you have to have a really intelligent conversation about whether it's world politics or world finance. And so rounding out that um, is very important. And last, I would say, stop to enjoy the journey. You know, I probably went 20 years with no travel, no hobbies. I've given my, you know, all of my life outside of my three boys to the BDB. I really have. I've given a lot of it and I don't have any regrets. It's been a wonderful journey, but you got to stop and take a, a breath every once in a while. And that balance of enjoying life and traveling and getting out there is only going to make you more productive in the work environment, but you can't ever get back those days. That's right? so important. You know, you can't I, get it back. I, I talk to my people about that all the time. My staff, yeah. my team, uh, you know, because we work a lot. People look at us and you and I've had this conversation before. People yeah. think, Oh my God, it'd be great to be the CEO of the business development board or the chamber of commerce or whatever. But we were a lot more hours than people realize. Like yeah. people don't realize we're out the door at, you know, five thirty, six AM and we don't come home till eight, nine, exactly. ten, sometimes even later. Um, but yeah, balance of life is so, so, so important. It so is. I'm learning that as I get older and older, Good. the better I'm getting at it. And I think um that's great advice that you could give to little Kelly. So First of all, you are absolutely amazing. You know how much you I love too. you. Thank you so much for absolutely. what you're doing for our community. Thank you, you. And the Business Development Board are just, um, we're so proud of the work that you're doing here in the county. And um, I personally love you to death and appreciate you always supporting me in our chamber and just being awesome like you are. So Kelly, thank you so much. This thank was you. awesome. It's been a pleasure. All right, thank you.